Dungeness has one of the largest areas of vegetated shingle in Europe and is internationally important. This unique and easily damaged landscape is home to many uncommon plants, insects and spiders. It is also a great place to find migratory birds in the spring and autumn. You will see the legacy of gravel extraction in a number of old gravel pits across the landscape. These are used by breeding seabirds and wintering wildfowl such as shoveler, also great crested newts and rare medicinal leeches. Hello again guys, I hope we're all well. Um, today I'm in Dungeness in Kent on the coast and I'm joined by quite a few people actually. We've got uh, Will behind us again and then Jake, Kenny from South Park, <laughs> and then Owen from Albion Camping. Yo. So, uh, oh, the uh, the miniature railway is just firing up behind us, um, and also the Britannia Inn, the only pub here, um, is right behind us as well. That's where we park the cars. Uh, we've just had some munch in there and a few ciders, and we're going to go for a little walk around here. Um, and explore the place. As I say, there's a miniature railway, there's sort of remains of uh, sort of like an old railway line and stuff like that. Two lighthouses, an old one and a new one. They've even got a nuclear power station just there. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Dungeness is actually Britain's only official <laughs> desert, so it's pretty barren round here, but there's something quite nice about it. The beach and the sea is out that way, sort of loads of like shacks and stuff like that, a lot of fishing going on here. Uh, the weather, apparently it's going to be raining all day, it's a bit shitty at the moment, so yeah we're going to scout out a uh, spot to wild camp over on the beach over there, other side of the power station, and then we'll go and have a look at sort of a few of the, the landmarks and stuff, should be good. Right, enough talking, let's get walking. <laughs> you can't even see the water tower anymore, look it's gone. That's how bad the visibility is over there. So yeah, there's the Britannia Inn. Very nice little pub. And these three nutters. There's the old lighthouse, which I think you can actually climb up to. So we're heading across this sort of marshy area and stuff to the miniature railway which I think is about to leave so we want to get some shots of that. Apologies if the uh, the visuals are a bit bad because of the, the weather and that. I think there might be some water on the lens already. It's about one o'clock now. We got here at like 11 and <laughs> basically sat in the pub for ages <laughs> as you do. Anyways, it should be a good one. Here is the uh, the little miniature railway at Dungeness. So I think it serves it's, uh, Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway. Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway, Jake says. Jake knows about his trains. So uh, yeah, it's a little buffet car. It's rather nice. It it made the news recently because it derailed. Uh, some car drove into it and knocked it over. So is there some boards to read? I think about it. Oh, is there? There's, there's loads of it's a shop and everything, calf and oh, blimey. loads of people and they rain saw, and light apps. They saw us <laughs> coming. Yeah, there's the uh, the power station. Apparently, looks really good at night because all the lights sort of you know all lights up and stuff. So no Chernobyl happens. <laughs> Should be fine. <laughs> and then it's got this building here. Do we know what that is? Lighthouse keepers. That's the lighthouse keepers. It's unusual. It's, it's circular, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's some really strange sort of buildings here. It's, I think it's got a unique character. I really like it. What are you looking at? It's like a wooden... Just random wooden shacks and stuff just littered about the place. Adds to it, it's cool. Um, yeah, there's the old lighthouse. I don't know if we'll be able to get in it today, but I've seen people on videos climb up to the top of it. Um, everyone's cracking out the waterproofs. The rain is coming down. He's brave in a shirt. Right. The weather's coming down, so we've each cracked out our uh, <laughs> our waterproofs. Um, some look better than others. I'm not going to lie. 
<laughs> I look like a massive blue tit with a hunchback, but yeah, anyway. And uh, we've got we've got Action Man over here. I've got a 70s flare going on here. Yeah, Jake's come straight from the training ground. Are you an Arsenal fan? It's a stormproof, windproof, rainproof. Owen's probably apparently. got the stylish, most stylish, stylish, stylish look out of everyone. Fit. Complete Montaine setup. For a change. Mr. For a change. <laughs> Decent. Right. Um, yeah, we're waiting for the train to leave. We better go on the platform, have we? Yeah, anyway. Um, I think we know it's where it goes. Yeah. There's a reason I don't crack this poncho tarp out much. Now you know. The moustache isn't helping either. Um, yeah, I don't know when this... Uh, when this we'll train's leaving, we'll we're going to have a look, all right. Although you are standing next to the old lighthouse, which was built in 1904, the actual tip of Dungeness Point is out beyond the black and white new lighthouse that was opened in 1961. The Romney, Hythe and Dimchurch Railway was extended to Dungeness from New Romney in 1928 by railway enthusiast Captain Howie who made his fortune from Land Estate in the centre of Melbourne, Australia. The narrow gauge railway brings around 100,000 tourists to the area each year. So this little uh, house here is formerly an old railway carriage that was dragged here and used as a holiday home. Quite famous for the area they did that. They just got everything that was old carriage and just slumped it on the beach and just stuck yeah, it Yeah, it's everything sort of you can just... You tell the size of it, it's like a shape. Yeah, you can actually, if you look at it from that way, yeah. No, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, something different. Very different, yeah. Here comes... Another car. Rolls-Royce. <laughs> yeah. It's incredibly barren. There's something, yeah, otherworldly about it. It feels like we're at the end of the world. It's quite nice, though. You feel like you're miles and miles away from cities and stuff like that it's sort of yeah like even the even the pub is kind of like a bit shack like really i like it here's the here's the new lighthouse that's of course in use now so the old one was back there at the the miniature railway Two nuclear power stations dominate the skyline. The nearest building is A Station, which was built in the 1950s and early 1960s and is being decommissioned from early 2007. The B Station was built during the 1980s and still generates electricity. Here's a closer up shot of a nuclear power station. Don't want to get too close to that, we don't want to end up with a third bollock. Do you think they're security conscious round here? We've got this fence, an electric fence, and then barbed wire, and then some spiky fence the other side. 
I think they're trying to tell us something. They don't want us to go in there. Could I be right? Right, on this section of the beach here in front of the power station um, is a section of water known as the boils. Basically all the water from like the cooling towers of the station uh, come out here. You can just sort of see there that funny patch of water there. And apparently a lot of the uh, the sea fishermen like to fish around here because the cod are attracted to it. Uh, I think that's why you get a lot of seagulls hovering around the surface of the water trying to pick the fish out of the sea. I don't know why they're attracted to it but it's quite a, a fascinating phenomenon that. Here yeah, look you can just see them there in the middle of the screen. I'll zoom out. We're just stopping for a little break. Owen just poisoned Will with his really strong juice. <laughs> Nutter. And a, a nice view with the, uh, what's it? Is it the callings? The boils. The boils! Well, nuclear radioactive boils. <laughs> so we're looking at some radioactive water. Susan Boyle! <laughs> oh, it's good. You going down there, yeah? All right. <coughs> Don't drink any of it. Yeah. We'll be out soon tonight. Glow in the dark. <laughs> okay, we're heading past the power station now, which is back that way where Jake is and it's a lot quieter here there's not a lot going on so uh yeah we're gonna probably find a suitable spot to camp around here and then we're gonna come back um come back a little bit later with our stuff and yeah and set up oh, i've just seen a fox in the distance so yeah much better along here we're heading back inland now, over this sort of funny sort of scrub area, past the power station, and head back to the cars, get the rest of our gear, and head back to that shingle beach back there that was nice and quiet. And uh, yeah, no doubt we'll probably get set up soon. Uh, that's the big electricity station over there. You can hear the hum. You can hear the hum and that, that supplies all the electricity to the, the nuclear power station. Or from it. Or from it or yeah. something, yeah. Not too sure. If anyone does know, get in the comments, let us know as always. Dungeon SB power station. Nice. Yeah, it reminds me a hell of a lot of like Orford Ness and uh, where else have I been that was like it, like Bradwell Nuclear Power Station of course, uh, in Essex. Yeah, that's nah, good fun. Something different. Will's found some of this moss on the ground and we said it looks like a nice little beret to go with his outfit. <laughs> where are the suits you? Gunnery Sergeant Dippy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Yes, he's, yeah, it's very, uh, is that damp? Oh yeah, damp and mossy. <laughs> it's really weird, isn't it? Everyone touched the moss. Brazilian. It's brutal. It's Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is, yeah. It's broken like loads of Some of the distinctive houses that nestle on the shingle are old railway carriages that were dragged across the shingle in the early 20th century and have been gradually renovated over time.
Okay, welcome back. We're uh, back at the cars now at the Britannia Inn and the plan is is we're going to drive around to the other side of the coast, other side of the power station and there's a little track that goes uh, down to the sea that a lot of the sea fishermen use and you can park up there so we're going to do that and then get set up so we'll chat to you soon. Welcome back guys, um, we drove down that little road and we come out to see in the distance there's these lights that's the power station at Dungeness and we've uh, walked down the beach from there parked up it's really busy though uh, with a lot of sea fishermen they've all turned up Saturday night is obviously the night to fish the sea is out there in the distance we've walked I'd say a good mile away from them and we sort of come across some like driftwood and old pallets so we're going to use some of this we're going to have a little fire on the beach um, out there inland is all Ministry of Defence land like a firing range although they're not shooting at the moment which is good so um, I think Jake and Owen are going to set up there because there's a bit more grass to sort of peg stuff in and then me and Will are going to bivy bag it here and I'm going to try and set up my Lomo 3x3 metre tarp which is in an OEX stuff sack I managed to fit in there, I don't know how so yeah, we've got a lot of booze, a lot of food, a lot of uh, firewood and stuff warm clothing is a must um, I just kited down this old decathlon bag Owen's lent me his softy trousers I've got a tent in case I couldn't get the tarp to work um, and we've got some empty plastic bags as well so that if we can't peg stuff down we can fill them with a uh, shingle and use that to like weight the tarp down and stuff like that waves are really crashing out there right we're going to get stuff set up get the fire going get some food on and we'll get back to you in a bit welcome back guys um, we're all set up we've been sort of working on it for an hour or so um, first off I've got my Lomo 3x3 metre tarp couldn't peg it down so we've uh, filled some uh, some Sainsbury's bags bags for life with uh, some shingle guide them out and stuff uh, we found the pallets and stuff on the beach so that's my uh, decking area to sit on later uh, I've got my out kit hunk of bivy bag in there down sleeping bag all that, all that shit I've got a new Tyvek, uh, Tyvek ground sheet under there as well, I'll show you that later. Uh, Will has uh, got a DD, DD Superlight tarp. Day, day tarp. Day tarp by DD. Uh, British Army Gore-Tex bivy bag, Tyvek ground sheet. Um, what sleeping bag is that? Uh, it's an old field and trek uh, goose down bag with a little cheapy bag on top. Oh nice. So and you've got a silver like car, I've got car windscreen thing. thing. Yeah, because they're good for Thank bouncing you. your body heat back up. Uh, you've got an out kit uh, like sort of jet boil style stove, haven't you? Uh, brew kit jackal. Brew out kit brew kit jackal. So I think it's sort of similar to my Highlander fast boil stove thing. It's like a jet boil basically. Um, digging in, entrenching shovel, yep. Um, and then I'll just show you down here, let's get past the decking, found some, uh, oh sorry it's auto focusing a bit, found some uh, bits of driftwood and logs as well on the beach so I just put that down the back and then Jake's here Hello. and uh, just show you they've gone a bit further inland. Uh, Owen has got his Van Gogh Banshee 200. Uh, he's coming down here to Gone give you a glam. tour. Gone for the glam. That's good. Go on, give us a little tour in there. It's not actually too windy. It's, it's quite nice actually. Probably get a bit colder later on. But we're alright at the moment. And you've got inside uh, my Snug Pack Softy Elite 3. Nice. Snug pack, travel light, sleep mat, and even a phone today. Nice, that's good. 
nice and comfy, that's good. I've only got my bloody Thermo SC light, hopefully I'll be alright, but we'll see. That looks cosy in there, yeah, that's good. And then, finally, <laughs> Jake has got... The high gear solar shine. Solo SD, yeah that's it, my old tent I sold him, <laughs> with the hole in the foot end. It's alright though. What you got in there again? You got I've got my, the Quetcha thermo pad. Oh um, yeah, that's, he's basically got a new yeah. uh, foam sort of silver lined pad from uh, Decathlon we went yeah, yesterday. So we've got that, that'll be good. I've got my Highlander. Highlander. Heavy duty sleeping bag. It's pretty yeah, lovely. you're going to need that, and, that's good. Um, yeah, it's got my bags in there and a little gelert pillow and I'm sorted for the night. Bang in. Excellent, so yeah, this is a camp over in the distance as well there. Right, um, that's about it really, yeah. We're going to... We're going to get some food on the go. We've got plenty of drinks to show you. So, um, with a new acquisition as well from Will earlier, he uh, kindly bought me this new little tin. Um, I think it was, was it rhubarb? Yeah, it was a rhubarb infused cider. So, we'll be cracking them out later. So, yeah, All right, we'll get back to you in a bit. Right, we're going to try and get this fire going. Here we go. It's Tommy. Uh, one side's got a thing on it, Tommy. You're doing it back to the front. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, fly from the side. Get the fly. Here he is. Oh, look at that. True bushcraft. Hey. That's got cotton wool with Vaseline in it. There it goes. Cheating a little Thumbs bit. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. These the experts now. Chuck some Turn your lights off, yeah. Nice and glow from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, guys, first drink of the night. It's cider time. We've got uh, <laughs> a status quo themed cider called Down Down. It's from Herefordshire, 4.6%. Uh, picked this up in Cold Christmas when we did our Halloween camp. Um, not really a lot to say about it on the back, so let's just crack it open. Looking forward to this one. Any of you are status quo fans out there? Can't beat a bit of the quo, it won't open. That's it, we're in. Right, cheers guys, thanks for watching. Right. Cheers everyone for joining us. <laughs> cheers. Bang in, right, cheers. let's cheers. give it a go. Oh. Ah. That's decent, it's not too bad. It tastes a little bit cheap though, I'm not going to lie. Um, you've had this before, haven't you, Jake? I had it last Saturday night when I was at home. What did you think? It made me fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap <enough>. date. <laughs> Cheap date, yeah. yeah. Um, it's lucky yeah. I, didn't, I didn't watch porn that night, I would have fallen asleep left it on the computer screen. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no. Um, no. Yeah, it's... Uh, Bit flat. It's knitting. <laughs> Look at him. String vest. It's so bleeding cold on this beach. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit flat. It's, it's nothing to write home about, really. Yeah, it's very um, plain. I thought very. Bit plain. I think it was more about the the image and the. Yeah, the name. I think it's just purely for like mm, yeah. novelty value. I would give it six point five out of ten. I could drink it, but it's not the best. I've got a couple more anyway. So, uh, and we've got a hip flask as well. Of amaretto in there, so. Oh, and you've got the right. special, uh, specialist, specialist beer, specialist cider. Oh, I have as well. Yeah, I've got. Um, I forgot all about that. Yeah, uh, I've actually Rosie. got. I've actually got two more. Oh, cider. Rosie or seven point two. Oh, no, it's a special one. Oh, was it not? Flat tire. Flat tire from a wheel. Oh. So I'll be cracking that one out next. Yeah. Anyways, cheers. Cheers. Right, welcome back again, guys. Second cider of the night. Uh, this one is kindly given to me by Will and it's Rosie's Pig Flat Tyre 4% uh, sparkling cloudy cider with rhubarb and it's by Western Cider established in 1880 see it's a tin so it's got to lose it a point already <laughs> but well, that's the rules but this uh, could be quite good this one um, it's quite a lot to read about it though Lightly sparkling cloudy cider with rhubarb juice, flat tyre made with fresh pressed Herefordshire apples. Not Hertfordshire. <laughs> Not Hertfordshire, <laughs> David Beckham lives there. 
This sweet and well balanced cider is slowly matured and left unfiltered to create an uncompromising flavour. The fruity taste paired with a tart finish makes it refreshingly Moorish. And uh, Rosie's Pig was one of the first delivery trucks Weston's ever owned. Uh, a pig to start and a pig to drive the same when Rosie's Pig still sits in our yard in Herefordshire and gives its name to our range of easy drinking cloudy ciders. There you go, a little bit of history with your cider. Right, let's go for it, let's crack this bad boy open. It's got some good artwork as well. You can see that, I don't know. We're going to see the truck. Yep. The tyre. Yeah. It's banging. Right. So, uh, oh, cheers, Will. Wherever he is, I think he's having a piss on the beach. Oh, it's got a funny smell to it. Right, let's give it a go. Cheers. Oh, blimey. That's really different tasting. Um, it's not very fizzy, actually. It's kind of almost like just drinking kind of like fruit juice, really. I've never really been a fan of rhubarb, but this is actually quite good. Oh. That's really nice. They mix really well together, actually. It's very refreshing tasting. Um, and not too dry. That's probably one of the best tin ciders I've ever had. So, Rosie's Pig Flat Tyre Rhubarb Cider. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna give you 8.5 out of 10. Decent. Cheers. Right guys, final cider of the night. It's a Stella Artois Sidra Raspberry Cider. Pick that one up in cold Christmas as well. Uh, it's four percent again. Uh, not really a lot to say about it. Right, let's crack it open. Have a go. Once again, cheers. Well, that's quite nice. That's the fizziest one of the lot I've had. Um, I mean, tonight, I think the best one's definitely Will's rhubarb. <laughs> rhubarb side. Spotlight on the fucking... Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, his was definitely the best. This one is quite fizzy. It's, uh, it's alright. Mm. I don't know about it. <clears throat> it's quite sickly. It's not as good as the peach one I had. I'm going to give that... I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Cheers. Right, well guys, it's uh, I think it's nearly two in the morning now, and yeah, we've just been sat around sort of our little campfire, sort of down the back of the beach, sort of drinking, chatting, eating a lot of food, we've had a real laugh, and uh, I'm in the tarp now, under the Lomo 3x3 three three metre, set it up like a pyramid, sort of weighed it down with all the stones and bits of driftwood and stuff. Um, just got like one trekking pole going through the middle here. Uh, I can hang like the little through night lantern off of that. And then I've got my bivy bag out kit hunker here. Um, I've got a Tyvek ground sheet down the bottom. I'll show you all that stuff in the morning. And my down sleeping bag. Uh, using the Thermarest Z like the sort of the foam accordion folding style pad full length with the silver uh, silver coating on it and uh yeah so basically plan is we're gonna try and get up early again um you know hopefully catch the sunrise that should be sort of over there east um get some breakfast on the go we're forecast rain now from about i think it started about midnight and sort of very light misting rain at the moment and it's we're gonna have rain till about 8 30 a.m we're told so we'll see anyway so anyways right see you in the morning
Well, good morning, guys. Um, I think it's about eight o'clock now. Uh, we're all awake. Owen and Jake have started taking their tents down behind us. Um, we've had some breakfast. It's quite chilly out. Um, word on last night, I slept fine, thanks. Uh, the tarp held up well. I mean, it looks a bit messy at the moment, but it did do the job. Uh, the bag system, filling the uh, Sainsbury's bags with uh, pebbles worked. And uh, yeah, it was nice, I slept really well, quite toasty. It did rain all night and the winds were a little bit strong at times, but it was alright really. And uh, here's Will's little setup, I really like this. It's really good, I might have to try something like that soon. And uh, yeah, he's got his DD Super Light Day Tarp, Gore-Tex Army Bivy Bag. He got two sleeping bags in there. Um, yeah, cosy. And then I've got my decking area, which was actually used as a wind block, and just to weight the uh, just to weight the tarp down. And then we sat over there by that log <coughs> had a fire um, yeah it was really good there was a police car earlier going up the uh, the access road and it turned around I think they was just looking to see if there was anyone up to no good but we're the only uh, three vehicles parked up there so it didn't look bad so they turned around and went um, I'll show you also one of our finds to add to my, uh, to add to my collection of weird finds from wild camps, we've got to go with the white hard hat from a uh, cliff fault and the blue fishing glove I found yesterday. We've got this rather odd shoe, which is definitely not from this country. So uh, we're not sure what that's all about. Could be a. Uh, I mean, it could be some part of the slavery, slave trade. We don't really know, really, with this. It's probably... You always have, only ever find one shoe. You never find a pair. So, someone's missing a shoe. But anyway, it's going in the collection anyway. I'm eventually going to make a suit from stuff I've found on the beach. No shit. Honestly. Anyway, so yeah, that's, uh, that's coming with me. Looks a bit grim inside though. Getting there under my tarp. So all in all, it's been a, a cracking little camp. Um, there's the sea. So, and we are parked. There. And we're heading back along this road. <coughs> back inland. trace um, all that stuff was there already I just put it back and I found it
MOD over there, we weren't actually camped on that bit so it's alright, but I've also found, we think it's a Chinese uh, nuclear waste glove, like handling stuff, and uh, yeah, that's another one for the collection, Wingo's brother, <laughs> works in the nuclear plant, oh! <laughs> the glove of death, <laughs> it's like a, a new Bond villain. <laughs> Rubber glove <laughs> and his shoe. Oh, how? <laughs> There's this, uh, this guy behind the speech code, he thinks we're absolutely fucking mental, and he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Be afraid! Be afraid! <laughs> Okay, we're back at the cars and we're all in one piece. It's a good little camp that, it's been fun. Uh, we've done Dungeon S, so uh, and the power station as well, yeah. Exactly nice, so that was pretty cool. Um, we found some cool stuff and uh, had a few laughs. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to Owen's channel. In, uh, in the video down below and uh, I can even possibly probably put a link to, uh, to Will's who's not got a channel but like an account so you, know, you, you can chat him up and stuff um, yeah he's getting some editing stuff together um, what is um, so anyways yeah Cheers for joining us. It's, it's been fun. And uh, cheers, Will. <laughs> right. See you later.